wow, I'm in a new area. And I'm all alone. And I can't find Donald or Goofy. Oh, hello viewers. This is Sora. And you were expecting Pikachu Master 542, huh? Well, apparently he had to go to... Uh, shoe fly! Uh, shoe! Uh, so basically, Pikachu Master had to go somewhere. Very important, so he couldn't do the intro for this episode. So I'm going to do the intro. Which I'm going to break character for some reason. I don't know what that means, but basically, I'm going to do the intro, so... In the last episode of... Uh, what's the script? Okay, in the last episode of Kingdom Hearts 2, Pikachu Master 5 or 2 played as me, Sora, and I went to the, uh, Agrobah and stuff, which I can barely remember any of it and stuff. So, I'm going to go to a new land and stuff. So, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of 44 of Kingdom Hearts 2. And... Don't mind Sora's awful acting, because he's not really an actor. Well, except his voice actor, Hilly Joe Osment. Wait, really? He voices me? Cool. I sound different. I don't know why. Okay. So, hopefully you enjoyed that episode, so... I'm gonna go find some kitties. Hey, look! There's a kitty right now! Hello, kitty! How are you? <coughs> 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 Rabbit Kitty! Rabbit Kitty! Ah! Also, enjoy the episode! Ah! I'm moving on. Going through broken highway. Bring it on!
Yes. Now to a new land, Halloween Town. Halloween Town. Hey, this is Halloween Town, right? What? A true ghost look like Halloween, what? Okay, have to mute that because I don't want to avoid getting copyright clicked. If you're looking for Zero, he flew off towards those buildings over there. He likes Jack a lot. Maybe Jack's over that way. Mithril Shard. There are save point. Oh. That's the ready chip. What's that for? That's Jack! Sora, Donald, and Goofy! Welcome back! And Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas? Don't you mean Happy Halloween? Of course! Halloween greetings from Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King! Forgive me, I'm in a Christmas mood. You see, I'm running the show again this year, but I need Sandy Claus blessings, so I'm off to Christmas Town! Sandy Claus? I think he means Santa Claus. Aren't these decorations wonderful? This year, Halloween Town's going to handle Christmas, too. But first, we have to visit Sally. 
She's working on something no self-respecting Santa Claus can do without. Come along, I'll show you. A Halloween Town Christmas? Wanna go check it out? <laughs> Come on, hurry! Okay. <laughs> Halloween town. Do do. Hello, Doctor. Where's Sally? Hey, this is way too heavy! Then let's toss it! You do, and you'll be sorry! Now bring it over here! In a moment.
Let's see. Lark Seed, formerly Organization 13's number 12. She has been eliminated. Lark Seed conspired with Marluxia to turn on the organization. Lark Seed was unfeeling and loved nothing more than to bring other people down. But she met her demise when that malice came full circle. Is that right? Let's see. Zigbar, Organization 13's number two. When Sora called out, called out to him, thinking he was Riku, Zigbar gave a curt reply. His motives and his methods were made unclear. Surely he has a greater goal in mind. But what could it be? What could it be? Seventh, Organization 13th number one. He directs the group as its leader. In truth, he is the nobody of Xehanort, who was apprenticed to Ansem the Wise. In secret, Xehanort studied the stores and the hearts of all worlds, ultimately stealing stealing his master's name, Ansem. When Xehanort became a heartless, his nobody, Xemnas, came into being. Xemnas is using Sora, collecting the hearts released every time a heartless falls to his keyblade. Saladin, Organization 13's number 3. He sought the beast's heartless and nobody in order to acquire Kingdom Hearts. He was a master of wind who willed who wielded six lances when he met his end at the hands of Sora. Syax, Organization 13's number 7. He was in pursuit of the renegade Axel, but for some reason seemed more concerned about Sora's well-being. Syax has no heart, but knows all too well how to injure one. No doubt his poison belly is a more savage nature. He also insinuated he knew something about Riku. Luxord. Organization 13's number... I think 10. A gambler who can manipulate time. Having shaken Sora and his companions with wily words, Luxord entertained himself by drawing them, in a, by drawing them into a game-like battle. In Port Royal, Luxor used Heartless and the Cursed Medallions to conduct experiments on the organization's behalf and collect hearts. Denix, Organization 13's number 9. He used a type of instrument called a sitar to control water, but he wasn't very good at fighting. Denix was under orders to liberate Sora's true disposition while serving. The world of Olympus. Seanort, the former apprentice of Ansem the Wise, even after becoming a heartless, Seanort persisted in his research of the doors and the heart of all worlds, all in the name of Ansem, of course. And a plane goes by. Meanwhile, his nobody, Zemnis, had taken over leadership, has, had taken leadership of Organization 13. Master Ansem. Ansem. Mickey Mouse. We have one, two, four, five, six, and seven. When you walk away.
Let's see. Secret Anderson Report number one. My efforts these many years have come to fruition with the world I govern having become a paradise worthy of being called Radiant Garden, nurtured by the pure water that is the source of light, fragrant flowers bloom in abundance, and the people face each day with hopeful smiles. But where there is light, darkness also lurks. As noted in my earlier reports, I must solve the mystery of this darkness of the heart. This paradise depends on it. I shall perform an experiment to probe the depths of a, of a person's heart. One of my own apprentices, Sayanot, has volunteered to be a subject. The young man has served me ever since I nursed him back, nursed him back from death's door some years ago. He had lost all his memories at the time, but later showed remarkable intele intellectual curiosity and, read, read, and readily absorbed by teachings, gaining deep wisdom. Any mental immaturity is surely due to his young age. If I explore the adult's heart with psychological tests, I may be able to recall the past locked away, locked away within. My apprentice, Ebon, has also shown great interest in Xehanort's memories. But is he really the right subject? Xehanort does indeed exhibit extraordinary talents. Too extraordinary. Perhaps they are even superhuman. Secret Anthem Report number two. I have made a grave mistake. My study of the darkness of the heart began with a simple psycholo psycho psychological test and quickly snowballed. Spurred on, spurred on by my youngest apprentice, Ienzo, I, I constructed a massive laboratory in the basement of my castle. Unbeknownst to me, my six apprentices then began collecting a large number of subjects on which to perform dangerous experiments into the darkness of the heart. As soon as I found out, I called my apprentices together and ordered them not only to cease their studies, but to destroy the results of their research thus far. What on earth was happening within the hearts of my six beloved apprentices? While pursuing the mystery of the darkness of the heart, could they themselves have strayed into its depths? Yet I have, yet I remain the most foolish of all, who have begun these experiments. We are not meant to interfere in the depths of another's heart, no matter what our reasons for doing so. And my error plunged me into despair, a visitor. Another world soothed my dejected soul. A tiny king like Mickey came wielding a legendary key, the infamous Keyblade, said to bring both chaos and prosperity to the world. He was very knowledgeable on many topics, and we deepened our friendship as we conversed companionly. Upon his advice, I decided to reveal the data obtained at my basement lab. That is when I discovered the Ansem reports. Though they bore my name, the only one I had written was number zero. Apparently, he had gone on to pen numbers one through eight himself. Yes, the first subject in my foolish experiments. Secret Ansem report number four. The distant days spent in that beautiful paradise are an illusion to me now. How long have I been here, banished to the realm of nothingness? It is only by relying upon my anger and hatred that I have been able to retain my sense of self here. 
where all existence is nullified. My heart is being overcome with hatred towards my apprentices. Possessed by the darkness and with the anger I feel for stupidly allowing myself to be betrayed, is this darkness eating away at my heart. I cannot continue to idly away to idle away my time here. What are Sayanor and the others attempting to do? I must unwrap the mystery of these Ansem reports, intercept my apprentices, and, dis and defeat them. That is my mission, the only way to repay the world for my sins. Those beings who lack hearts, the heartless, must be the key. The door to the heart. The door of the heart, made of flesh, cursed shadows who not only lack hearts, but multiply by seizing hearts from any and all living things. Where have they come from, and where are they going? Three elements combine to create life, a heart, a soul, and a body. But what of the soul and body left behind when the heart is lost? When the soul leaves the body, its vessel, like, gives way to death. But what about when the heart leaves? A being does not perish when its heart leaves its body. The heart alone disappears into the darkness. There is little time. If I remain in this realm much longer, I will certainly learn these answers the hard way. My heart is already a captive of the darkness. Secret and report number five. In this realm where all existence has been dis disintegrated, I have just barely managed to preserve my sense of self by continuing to think and to write. It is a place where every time, where it is a place where even time has lost all meaning. Eternity is as but a moment in here. I must make haste. Certainly the plans are already underway. The heartless must be the key to unraveling this mystery. The six traders were operating a laboratory that shut out those cursed shadows. Not only did they generate pure blood, heartless, from living hearts, but they then Use those heartless to synthesize artificial versions of the creatures as well. These synthetic heartless bore insignias that were called emblems. Pure blood or emblem, these heartless act only to fulfill their instinctive needs. They, sing they single mindedly detect hearts and swarm around them. A human's curve. A human's commands would be ineffective. The heartless would easily steal the human's heart and use it to increase to increase their own ranks. But what if an even stronger heartless was giving the orders? If he cast aside his own soul and body and became a heartless, wouldn't he be able to control the otherwise intractable heartless? Furthermore, wouldn't he be planning to make use of the creature's instincts? If the heart-seeking heartless have their sights set on a larger, more powerful heart, their ultimate goal is crystal clear. The heart in existence, the heart of the world. This is all conjure... What the heck? Conjecture. But it would seem he is utilizing the heartless in his search for a path leading to the heart of the world.
Okay, now we switch. Ah! Okay, all right. Where's the kitty? Okay, good. The kitty's gone. Well, that's the end of the episode, I guess. Thank you guys for watching episode 44 of Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, hope you all have a great week, and see you next time. This is Sora signing out for Pikachu Master 542, and uh, uh, I don't know, probably says peace and have a great week. Bye, and stay awesome. And Pikachu probably say something like Pika Pika Pikachu Pika. I don't know what a Pikachu is, but he sounds pretty cool. I want to fight him. Bye. How do you turn this thing off? Uh, nope. That switches. Nope. That raises the volume. Nope. That freezes. Oh, look. There's a square. I wonder what it does.